Akron Athletics presents Zips Weekly. Brought to you by Bryant Heating and Cooling. Whatever it takes. Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And the Spaghetti Warehouse. Located at 510 South Main Street, Building 33 in Akron, Ohio. Home of the 15 layer lasagna. And here's your host, Joe Dunn. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to a brand new season of Zips Weekly. My name's Joe Dunn, and here's your invitation to stay with us all season long as we update you on what's happening all over the University of Akron campus. In a few weeks, we'll have Tom Arth, the head football coach here at the University of Akron, as our weekly guest. But today, there is no better person as our leadoff hitter on our weekly TV series than Larry Williams, director of athletics here at the University of Akron. And Larry, wasn't too long ago, we were up in Cleveland at the Mid-American Conference Tournament. All the Zip fans were excited. We thought we were going to the NCAA tournament and all quickly unraveled. Yeah, it wasn't an amazing uh, eight months that we've been through, yeah. and particularly starting from that point. The, uh, the disappointment on each of the participants' uh, eyes were just, oh my gosh, that was heart-wrenching. Yeah. Both from the, from the uh, standpoint of the players and the coaches who had all put in such great effort. But since that time, we've really worked hard uh, to hunker down and build and, and try to get uh, everything in place to replicate that this year. And I'm really confident about where we are and excited to see it play out. Well, the good news is in a couple of weeks, we'll be playing football. The Zips opening up on November 4th. That's right. That's right. We're almost there. It's yeah. almost time for football. A little yeah. late, but we'll take what we can get. Uh, I, I really have to credit uh, a lot of the folks here uh, on our, on our uh, campus in our department that handle all the real difficult particulars uh, relative to testing and, and protocols to, to keep everyone safe. It's been heavy, heavy lift, and they've done a great job. We have about 500 student athletes on campus, Larry, and we want to keep them safe. What has been kind of the protocol and some of the steps you've done to make sure they have that good zip bubble? <laughs> if, if, if we, the, this show is not long enough to be able yeah, to describe all of the detail that have gone in uh, to making this thing happen, uh, both from, uh, you know, from the standpoint of uh, how the kids uh, on, on every one of the teams operate, and then how uh, it operates on a macro level. It's a, it's a, um, it's a monumental undertaking, and uh, I won't bore you with particulars, yeah. but I'm really pleased with both the work of our folks and the, the dedication from our student athletes to make sure that this uh, can happen. They're motivated to yeah. do it because they want to play. Obviously, we have football practicing. I was over at uh, Rhodes Arena the other day. Basketball is starting. How many of our teams are actually together and practicing, even though they won't be playing? Yeah, very good question, Joe. And, and, and let me put it this way, all of them. Good. Everyone's, uh, everyone is, uh, is in a practice mode right now, really eager to get going. Our, the rest of our fall sports, save, and I'll, I'll get to it in a second, uh, cross country on the women's side, mm -hmm. uh, everyone has shifted then all those fall sports to the, uh, to the spring, okay. and so they're basically in uh, their former non-championship season uh, mode, which means that they practice every day, and they scrimmage against each other, and they train their bodies as hard as they possibly can. I would think that scheduling has been somewhat of a nightmare. There's games canceled, you got to pick up games. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, that's been really, really interesting, Joe. So, College athletics uh, operates at a pace that, uh, that's manageable. Uh, we work on football contracts probably five years yeah. in advance. Uh, basketball can uh, contracts for the non-conference components are typically uh, a year in advance. Yeah. Uh, and so all of a sudden, uh, we, had, we were thrown into a scenario where we had to rebuild both of those uh, segments uh, in a matter of a couple of months. Right. And uh, we're still putting the final touches on our basketball schedule, but football's uh, locked and loaded, though very short, truncated season, six games yeah. in conference only. Uh, and then uh, basketball has a, uh, also a truncated non-conference season, but we're going to get a chance to play some uh, out-of-conference games there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so it's been a lot of work, but it's been fun. I would guess the challenge right now is to make everything run smoothly because you and I both know it seems like every week there's more college football games being canceled. That's a challenge now to make yeah. sure it all works. Yeah, and there's no, there's no guarantee that uh, yeah. our games won't be canceled either. Right. Uh, we, are, we are at the, uh, at the mercy of the pandemic, yeah. uh, and um, it, it has to run its course, uh, and we just have to be able to be responsive to it. And I think we've got great commitment from our uh, conference uh, member schools. Uh, they all want to see it happen, but they want to see it happen safely, uh, yeah. just, just as we do. And uh, so we're going to get in as many of those six as we can. We're going to knock on wood that, uh, that indeed all six can get played. And 
uh, who knows, maybe we can play in the championship game. Right, Jack, looking forward to that. We're going to be talking about a new campaign, Zips Rise Together, a little bit later, but that's something I know you've, you've really worked hard on to make sure Zip fans have an opportunity with what's happening now to contribute. Yeah, and it's, it really does set up a great opportunity uh, for involvement. I was at a dinner uh, uh, this weekend, and, and uh, we had some robust conversation around the dinner table uh, about how this time is critical for us to have participation from our entire community yeah. because of the difficulties that are, uh, that are in front of us, uh, but, the, but yet still the same desire to allow these student athletes to be able to compete and do what they do and represent us. Uh, it really is going to take uh, the entire community to help us uh, get over the hurdles that are that are presented from a, from a revenue standpoint right. that we can't participate in. So if you haven't been able to uh, go to a game and contribute through ticket sales, is there a way that you can mm -hmm. uh, find a different uh, means of of contribution to uh, to that enterprise that gives these student athletes that opportunity? We'll get into more specifics about the campaign a little bit later in the program, uh, but tell us a little bit about. Maybe some individual students. I know you like to talk to the student athletes. Maybe there's some stories that uh, you've been able to tell the fans about these individual students who are really working hard to make sure this all works. Yeah, you know, I, I'll start. I'll start with one of our one of our uh, really great leaders in in Lauren Christian Jackson. Yeah, player of the year last year. Had an absolutely stellar year. Uh, competed like crazy. Uh, graduated from his uh, his undergraduate program. And yet he still found time. Yeah. He said, I want to come back. I want to be a zip one more time. I want to do this again. And it was really an interesting uh, decision that he made uh, because he was very thoughtful about it, very discerning. And, and, uh, and yet this is the best place uh, to continue his education and to con continue his collegiate career. Um, and then, the, you know, with the pandemic, uh, it was really interesting. Is this the time? And we saw many students across the uh, country opt out uh, but yet Lauren has really powered through. Um, he had his own challenges with COVID over the summer, uh, but yet he comes back onto campus and is the most uh, uh, well-suited leader I think I've seen in quite some time in college athletics in that he has the natural gifts of a leader yeah. in that uh, whatever he says, uh, he backs up. He can back it up with his play. He can back it up with his own uh, uh, off the field, off the court uh, activities. Uh, he is a stellar leader, and it's really been fun to watch how he is interacting now with the new team, which has many new members. Yeah. Um, and so I would, cite, I would cite Lauren Christian Jackson is sort of the first one that you'd want to look at and say, that's college athletics at its best. I'm glad you mentioned it because I was on campus last week, had an opportunity to stop over at InfoCision Stadium and, and watch the football team practice a little bit. Then I walked over to Rhodes Arena and watched basketball, and the first person to come up and say hi to me was Lauren Christian Jackson. And, I'll tell you, Larry, I walked into Rhodes Arena. There were some athletes on this basketball team this year. Oh, yeah. John, John Gross has done a tremendous job rebuilding this program uh, from a legend in, in, in Keith Amprot. Uh, but, but now John is putting his spin on it, and it has really been impressive to watch the, uh, the quality of the uh, student athletes that, uh, that, that, that he's assembling on the roster. It seems as if it's getting better and, and, and more numerous. Yeah. Uh, and so I think uh, in, in short order, our challenge will be, uh, how do you find enough minutes in a game for, for this much uh, Exactly. Talent? I thought the same thing. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Uh, quickly, uh, the NCAA, of course, has made a few announcements. One that kind of intrigues me, and we talked about this before we came on camera. Yeah. They're giving everybody another year of eligibility. I know you have to work through that, but that's an interesting concept. Yeah, and it's a real challenge um, because while the student athlete gets another year of eligibility, those rosters aren't increased. So the, the, the scholarship uh, cap still remains in place. That's 85 uh, for football. 85 for football, yeah. uh, 13 on the basketball right. side. So, so you, you, can't, you can't expand the, uh, the number of folks you have uh, on scholarship. Uh, and, and so we will have to figure out ways to, uh, to make this work. Fortunately for football, uh, in, the, in the transition uh, between head coaches, uh, we had a uh, dip in our uh, participation right. on the men's side. So we have some room to grow there, but uh, not to get too complicated. We can only bring in 25 new ones exactly. a year. And so um, the uh, scholarship counting is, uh, is a very complicated and uh, tedious process that, uh, that we really need to spend time uh, managing as, as uh, each of these young student athletes then has an opportunity to play uh, more seasons. Exactly. 
You know, another uh, announcement came from the Mid-American Conference, and maybe you can expand on this a little bit, Larry. What they said, there will be no general public ticketing for the football games. Uh, even though they'll be on television, listen on the radio, it's going to be funny with no people uh, in the stands. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen it uh, across the country right. uh, as right. we as we've turned on our TVs on Saturdays and Sundays right. uh, through the fall. Here, uh, some stadiums are, are are able to allow it. Some stadiums uh, aren't able to allow uh, uh, fans in the stands. Uh, boy, I miss the I, I miss the, the the rowdiness of a crowd. Sure, and you get sure. to see a little bit of it with some of the schools down south, uh, and it just gives you that flavor that uh, we look forward to uh, in in. in in next year's uh, season, but uh, for the time being, we're only going to be able to uh, to allow in the families of the student families athletes. Families will be allowed in. Yes. Okay. Uh, both. Uh, we're hopeful for the visiting families, but we're certain of the home uh, families, um, and and uh, even that is going to be a, a bit of a uh, a challenge to us. We're going to try and meet that challenge, be able to demonstrate that we can do that on a on a broader scale. So. Um, you know, uh, especially with the, as we look into the winter sports and the spring sports, can we, because of our history of, of having shown it in football, uh, can we now handle more than just the families? So that's what we're really driving to, to build this yeah. uh, uh, um, capacity for, uh, for fans to be able to come in exactly. and take it in. TV is a great partner. It though, is. And it really gives us uh, an opportunity to share this, uh, these performances, these representations with uh, the rest of the country uh, by virtue of... Uh, by, by, exactly. by virtue of television. One final question before we take a sure. break, uh, Larry. We talked about the student athletes, the challenge they faced, the coaches, but the medical staff, the staff you have on campus, the trainers, the student managers, they're an intricate part of all this. Oh my gosh, not just intricate, critical. Yeah. Oh, we have, we have, uh, we're blessed with, uh, with uh, one individual that's really taken the lead here in Bill Drotty, yeah, Bill's who, is, who is an absolute yeah. superstar. The most dedicated professional right. I've ever seen. Really brilliant relative to the uh, medical components of this, but also very pragmatic as it relates to the detail of the protocols that have to take place in order to mitigate these challenges that we've got medically. He is, he is off the charts. He's been a leader not just for us in the athletic department. He's been a leader for the, the entire campus at the University of Akron. Uh, in helping the university come up with the right protocols, and yet also with the conference. Yeah. He is, he's the go-to guy. Wow. So we're blessed to have Bill's uh, participation and commitment, and uh, if you ever get a chance to see him and say hello, say thank you too, because Bill's uh, allowed all of this to occur. Yeah, I've known Bill for a long time. He is a good man. Hey, we're going to take a break and back with more Zips Weekly right after this. I'm here. This isn't a stop on my way somewhere else. This is my way up. This city, this university, Akron is where I learn to outwork and outsmart. To aim high, then raise the bar. Because Zips never settle for less. No entitlement, no excuses, just my education. My future. I'm on the rise and we are Akron. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Choice Air HVAC. Find them at choiceairwithane.com. Welcome back to Zips Weekly. The big question, how are student athletes handle the pandemic? Here at the University of Akron, Spencer German talked to a few of these. Let's watch them right now. College sports look different this fall, both at the University of Akron and nationwide. From masks and social distancing to virtual team meetings and off-the-field sacrifices, our Zips are rising together to overcome the challenges presented by the pandemic with visions of playing this spring. It started out a little interesting just with social distancing within practice. So we weren't allowed to just full go, have blockers on each side of the net. So that was a little bit different. Um, obviously, we have the masks that we have to wear and keep on all the time. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely been challenging, but nothing that we haven't been able to get through so far. We started from phase one, you know, we couldn't really do much contact. So it was a lot different than how we were practicing in the spring. But um, once we got into phase three, uh, we started being able to, you know, scrimmage, do small-sided. We're kind of into the big-sided stuff now with the numbers we have. Um, 
but like I said, it's just, it's very competitive. The freshmen have added um, a lot to the team, and I'm, like, just these practices right now have us really, really excited for our spring season. The biggest one is motivation for us. I mean, aside from what the school is doing with the temperature checks and testing, um, our team has been great with sacrificing off the field. Um, obviously, wearing our masks wherever we go. you got to make sacrifices, like, during times like this, you know, because we know once we get uh, but a lot of guys get the virus, you know, we, we might get shut down. So just be safe, you know, wear, wear, wear your mask. Uh, I'm no, I'm, I, don't, I don't have mine right now, but I, I do wear my mask all the time. So, uh, you know, wear your mask and, uh, you know, wash your hands and just, you know, keep a uh, distance. It's not normal. It's you're, you're trying to adjust to everything. I think from before, the hardest part is not seeing everybody. You know, you go from seeing these girls and, you know, coaches and, all the people every single day to not seeing anybody at all and that was really hard and still now um you know finally we're a lot in the locker room which is so much better you know there's there's a certain type of vibe in the locker room that everybody just enjoys so that's that's nice to see but like i said it's it's hard to go from seeing people every day to not seeing that, them at all i think just the most disheartening part was not being able to have our season um especially as a senior not being able to just go about our normal routine that was a really big struggle and also just not getting the time that we were supposed to have together and be able to train and develop as early as we would like to. Yeah, we got our, cancel, our season canceled and yeah, we were sad about it, but the rebound was amazing from our guys and it didn't take long for us to get right back into training and uh, get things rolling again for the spring. The uncertainty, you know, like you don't know what's gonna happen today, you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, like you don't know like, who's gonna get the virus or stuff like that. So it just, it just goes crazy and uh, it's very easy to, to let go of not doing schoolwork, of not just keeping track of time and, and everything. So you just gotta find that motivation. I think we've handled it as best as we can. I mean, my teammates have been awesome. I think we're a really flexible group. So we've been able to just kind of roll with what's been thrown at us. And this is just another thing. While it might be a little bit more significant than what we normally get to face, it's something that as long as we're all together, we're able to get through it. And I think that we're gonna come out on the other side better for it. We do what we have to. Whatever you know, the professionals and the medical staff tells us we have to do, that's what we're gonna do. And um, I think as a group, everybody's done a great job. You know, wearing masks when we have to be, um, making sure we use hand sanitizer, our trainer, you know, sprays down all our equipment. So everything that we're doing to be safe and be here, that's the most important part is we want to stay in practice, do everything we can to um, stay, you know, fit, stay competitive um, on the ball. We'll do it. So that's as a whole, I think everybody has the same goal, the same vision. You know, we want to be playing at whatever cost. So everybody's been doing a great job as far as that goes. Well, Larry, the one thing I got out of that feature, our student athletes want to compete. They want to play and they'll do anything they can to make sure that happens. Yeah, it's really, it's really uh, inspiring actually to see yeah. their energy and enthusiasm. And when you think about it, as an 18 to 22, 22 year old maybe, yeah. uh, a great, mar just a huge part of their life has been wrapped up in playing that sport. Uh, so it's their identity on the line. Exactly. Uh, and so it's, it's, really, it's really invigorating to, to, to sit down and talk with them or just even catch a, a, a quick uh, uh, conversation with them is just is really inspiring. Yeah. More Zips Weekly right after this, so don't go away. Miller Lite is brewed for great taste with only 96 calories and zero grams of sugar. So when one's done, it's the perfect time to start another. Miller Lite, hold true. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on and to keep your family warm this winter? Here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Welcome back to Zips Weekly as we continue our conversation with Larry Williams, Director of Athletics here at the University of Akron. And Larry, Zips Rise Together, major campaign. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we, we're really excited to be able to launch a, a very focused campaign to try to mitigate some of the uh, challenges that uh, beset us with the, with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're uh, hoping for is that uh, all Zips stand up and, and really contribute together uh, to allow these student athletes to be able to pursue that life passion that they have 
and represent us sure. uh, so well. And, and uh, so this gives some various vehicles to be able to do that and allows us to channel some, some, uh, some extra help that way uh, to make sure that we can continue our, our efforts here. I know there's a lot of printed material out there, Larry. If a person wants to contribute into the one air, four areas, how do they do that? Who well, they contact? They, they could contact either George Van, Van Horn or uh, 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 Brock, okay. and, and either of them would be able to uh, direct whatever uh, desire the contributor might sure. have. And, and so sometimes that's through tickets. Uh, sometimes it's a direct gift to the Z, Z Fund. Uh, we, we, will, uh, <laughs> we will stop at nothing to be able to uh, accommodate uh, anyone who wants to sure. help us because uh, we believe in what we're doing. Uh, we believe in these student athletes and uh, we really think it's worth it and we hope that uh, many out there really think so as well. Sure. Larry, thanks for joining us today, giving us an update on what's happening in Zip Country. Ah, thanks so much, Joe. Great to be here with you. Okay, we're going to take a break and back with more Zips Weekly right after this. I'm here. This isn't a stop on my way somewhere else. This is my way up. This city, this university. Akron is where I learn to outwork and outsmart. To aim high, then raise the bar. Because Zips never settle for less. No entitlement, no excuses, just my education. My future. I'm on the rise and we are Akron. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Choice Air HVAC. Find them at choiceairwithane.com. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly. Our leadoff hitter was Larry Williams, Director of Athletics here at the University of Akron. And now our cleanup hitter, a good friend of mine, Ann Jorgensen, who is Senior Associate Athletic Director, also directs the Klein Leadership Academy, among a lot of duties she does at the University of Akron. And Ann, welcome to the program. I have known you many, many years. I know how much you love the University of Akron, and I know how proud you are of the Klein Institute. Thank you, Joe. It's so great to be here and be able to talk about a very special project that we kicked off a year ago, the Klein Leadership Academy. This is a program that's so totally involving our student athletes in all directions, their career direction, their career choices, their professional development, um, their ability to be out in the community, a total developing project in addition to, of course, the very wonderful academics that they are pursuing, but more importantly, it's developing the whole person. And we were able to kick it off last year. Now it's a continuing project. And I wanna say that with the community involvement, we were honored to receive the Experiential Committee's Award from the University of Akron for the most community involvement of a student group on campus. So we're continuing that already this year. I understand the students can uh, become a part of the Klein Leadership Academy from a first day on campus. They are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, graduate students. They're all encompassing. Right now we are focusing on the juniors, seniors, fifth year students, graduate students, because it's very important that their resumes be up to speed, be um, logged with our career center also. But importantly, because they're getting ready to do their internships, their practicums, jobs, employment, and we've got to be on top of it. We've got alumni that are coming to get our student athletes and corporations all over. So it's, it's a thrilling time for them. Corporations, whether you're in Northeastern Ohio or all over the country, they love to hire student athletes. Oh, that's absolutely true. And we have them coming from California to New York to Florida, you name it. And, but we are so proud to be able to have our alumni that were student athletes come back and say, hey, I need somebody working with my company and we aim to please as best we can. And wish we had more time to talk about it, but keep up the good work. Thank you, Joe, so very much. And go Zips because we're proud of them. There you go. We'll see you back here next week with more Zips Weekly. Always remember, go Zips. Zips Weekly. Brought to you by Bryant Heating and Cooling, whatever it takes. Miller Lite, it's Miller time. 
and the Spaghetti Warehouse, located at 510 South Main Street, Building 33 in Akron, Ohio, home of the 15-layer lasagna.